Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're covering how to mix low end. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Distort lows with compression. Distorting your lows can be really helpful, especially when you have multiple instruments fighting for space in a narrow frequency range. If we distort the kick, we'll be able to hear both the kick and bass instruments better due to how the harmonics from the distortion differentiate them. To do this, I'm going to use a compressor with a very fast attack and release and set these to the quickest setting, in turn causing unique but natural sounding distortion. Let's take a listen. Transient Shaping Lows If you're finding your lows are sounding blurred together, use a transient shaper on your kick or bass to add some high frequency content to that signal. I'll use Elevate by Newfangled Audio to increase the level of my kick's transients and to separate it from other instruments. This can be easy to overdo, so use your ears and try to keep the effect at a reasonable level. Let's take a listen. If you're enjoying the video, consider hitting the like button. It really helps us bring you more videos. Inverse EQ, bass, and kick. For this trick, we need an EQ that can match signals. We'll match the kick and bass signals and then delete some of the more extreme bands. Then we'll highlight all of the bands and subtly invert their gain, causing everything that matched the signals to now separate them. This trick works well for other instruments in a similar frequency range, so try it out whenever needed. Let's take a listen. How to Amplify Sub or 808 if you're mixing a track with subs or 808s and you want to amplify or attenuate them, take a look at 20 to 60 hertz, which is where these instruments will be situated. If you want to make your sub or sine wave of your 808 louder, simply amplify this. And of course, if it's too loud, you can do the opposite. Let's take a listen to it. How to EQ kick. Although all kicks are a little different, here are some more important frequencies and ranges to pay attention to when you're equalizing a kick drum. 40 hertz is usually the kick's fundamental and sub, whereas 80 hertz is typically the lowest kick frequency that consumer grade speakers will be able to support. 800 to 1300 hertz is about where you'll hear the snap of the drum skin if you're using organic samples or original recordings. Lastly, 4 kHz to 6 kHz is where you'll hear the air of the kick or the tail end of the kick drum vibration. Let's take a listen to these frequencies in particular. Only a small percentage of people that watch our videos are subscribed, so if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. How to EQ Bass Guitar Bass frequencies will depend on the range, key, and other factors, so let's focus on the fundamental and its harmonics. The fundamental is going to be the strongest frequency and give you the body and warmth of your bass. The second order harmonic helps the instrument translate to consumer speakers. Third adds a little clarity to the bass and is going to help separate it from the kick. Lastly, from about 1.5 to 2.5 kHz, you'll find the most percussive 
or transient aspects of the bass. Let's take a listen to these frequencies. Warm drum bus compression. If you're mixing a drum bus and it needs compression, try using an internal side chain and cutting out the lows from triggering the compressor. This way, less compression occurs and the kick is attenuated less often, causing the drums to have a warm and full tone. You can also try some saturation and use tube or transformer settings to emphasize the low end of your drums. Let's take a listen. If you'd like our custom plugin presets, samples, loops, session tracks, MIDI packs, and download sheets, join and become a member, and if you change your mind, you can cancel any time. Bass on the side image. Depending on your processing, bass frequencies can sometimes end up on your side image, making the mix sound less focused. This can be a good thing and can be used for creative effects, but if you want a driving kick and bass, it's best to keep the lowest frequencies mono. Using a mid-side EQ, I can use a high pass on the side image, attenuating any bass on that image, and ensuring that the lows stay mono. Let's take a listen. Modulated Distortion on Lows With Modulated Distortion, we can ensure that the distortion primarily occurs on a kicks or basses transients, in turn making the instrument cut through a mix. To do this, I'll use Saturn 2, I'll create a band, and I'll create an envelope follower with a short attack, decay, and release. On the second band, I'll heavily distort the signal and place its crossover right above the lows. Then I'll link my envelope follower to this crossover. This way, whenever the kick hits, the envelope follower increases the value of the crossover, meaning that the lows become distorted as well, but in a program-dependent way. Let's take a listen. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Also, join and become a member for exclusive advanced videos, future plugin presets, samples, midi packs, and more. Thank you so much for watching.